In the last picture, what we saw was the motion of the the man or the streamer along the flow and against the flow. Just a Okay. So now we are going to, you know, do those problems in which we have to move across the river. Okay. So you will have some starting point. So to make it uh, a mathematically, you know, uh, easier, we'll make some choice of the coordinate axis. So let X represents the direction of flow the positive x imagine as i said the surface of the water or the river will act as a, a moving platform so you can always imagine this is like a like a conveyor belt okay if you have seen the conveyor belt it moves you know in one particular direction uh, you can think as a travelator in the on the airports. <laughs> so this is the conveyor belt, which is moving with velocity u. <laughs> so this is moving with velocity u, and it is always moving with you. So imagine if a person is simply standing here on the belt, not on here. If a person is standing here, with what speed it will move? You. Yeah. If you are standing on the conveyor belt, will you move or will you remain at a rest? <coughs> what will happen? So you will move. So you will move with what speed? Same as you? Yes. Sir. So that speed is with you, whether you are moving or not, doesn't matter, isn't it? Are you getting a point what I'm saying? So whether you move or not, your speed remains same as the belt? Yes. Sir. So any person on the conveyor belt, or you can say any person which is just floating on the river, will acquire the speed of the, or will acquire the speed of the flow. So flow speed is something which is common to every person who is trying to float. Now when we talk about the swimming, when we talk about the you know the you know you row the boat, you swim. Your ability to swim is always defined with respect to the water, not ground. Okay. So how you can move is defined with respect to water and the V is called velocity of that's called boat with respect to water surface. Water surface. So V is not the ground frame velocity, it is the velocity with respect to surface. <laughs> okay. So we know that the velocity of man or the swimmer or the boat, let's call boat only. So velocity of boat with respect to the river is basically VB minus VR. So velocity of boat in the ground frame <laughs> is the vector sum of the river velocity and the the man velocity with respect to river, not ground. So it is a vector sum. So <clears throat> in a way, it will always form a triangle law. So you can think as, if I call this as VR, 
if this is a vr vector and if you try to <coughs> move this way with respect to water let's say this is this is how you're trying to move with respect to water the <coughs> actual path of motion that you will have with respect to the ground will be like this the blue line will represent the the vb vb is the actual direction in which you will see it to be moving so vr is by default you have a vbr is something which you try to you know <coughs> create the motion with respect to water then in ground frame <coughs> the person will be appearing to be moving this particular way the other way of drawing is you can draw the two vector tail to tail you can say this is uh, vr and uh, this is vbr if this is vr and if this is vbr then the man will actually appear to be moving something like this understood so the red line here is representing what can you tell me what is the red line representing here what is the red line representing the vb tell me. vb so vb is the resultant of these two vectors <laughs> so definitely vb can have many direction okay now the resultant of the two will give you the vb let's say if i want vb like this let's say someone is saying that okay we know this is vr very common sense thing if this is vr and what i want is <clears throat> i want a vb like this so what should be the vbr obtuse or acute obtuse sir obtuse so vb <clears throat> you can say vbr must be like this isn't it yes sir something like this so <clears throat> if you want the vb this way then vbr so you must try to swim this way if you try to swim this way if you move if you try to move this way then in reality you will go along the direction shown just a moment i'll go back to the diagram so the whole idea is the way you want to move in reality in the ground frame and the way you should move in water are quite different so based on how you want yourself to be going in the absolute ground frame the vbr is generally chosen by the swimmer because that is how you know you can decide that eventually in which direction you will move in the ground frame so that there is a something called direction of intention like that direction in, in which you intend to move it is like you you try to move this way and <clears throat> there is a direction called the reality the actual direction that's called like a vv so in uh, this particular topic these two are given a separate name okay so name means like we call by some name like the way you want to move <laughs> with respect to water is one particular thing and the way you will actually move is something different so there is a definite name for it i'll come to the name very soon so look at this first of all so what i'll do is i'll make a i'll mimic a let's say this is a boat so you can see <clears throat> you're trying to propel in which direction in the direction of y correct so the direction in which you intend to move you desire to move not what i would say <laughs> this is how you desire to move the direction in which you aim to move with respect to water we call line of heading what we call line of heading <laughs> so this is this is called v v means 
the direction in which you are you are trying to move with respect to the water surface is called the line of heading is it visible to you the line of heading? so line of heading always represents the direction in which you <coughs> intend to move so what is the actual direction that you can expect so the you see v is something you are trying to move but you have by default a velocity whether you are moving or not called u okay so you have a ready made value u so what will be your actual path can you guess your actual path will be somewhere in between is it yes. so your actual path will be something in like this <laughs> if i extend this line so if this is u and if this is v <laughs> this is, you can say v b and this is but uh, particularly this is what v b r and this is nothing but the vr do you realize this u v and v yes sir. now the actual direction of motion <coughs> the actual direction of motion is called line of motion so in the river man problem or river boat problem there are two things which are of uh, the great importance the first is called the line of heading so line of heading is defined as the direction in which the swimmer is intending to move okay <laughs> and the line of motion is the direction in which you actually move so line of heading is also called the relative velocity the velocity which we see in the frame of the <laughs> the river surface okay so let's say if i take a, a wooden log let's see if i have a wooden log and try to understand this part this is very crucial <clears throat> imagine I, if i attach a frame of reference with this log if i call y dash and x dash so <clears throat> this is a floating object tell me what will be the speed of the object you so this object will move with you so a person in the frame of uh, this a person sitting over here if this guy will observe the motion of the boat uh, what he will see will he see vb vbr v or vr sir vbr how many of you are able to understand this questions are required tell me for that guy in the frame of that observer which component will vanish the observer himself or herself is moving with velocity u isn't it the log yes. is moving with u so if you if you are sitting on that log and trying to look at the boat <laughs> which component of velocity you want to be able to see so you correct so that's correct but like, just let me ask other tell me prashant and uh, rukwed are you listening to me yes sir so do you understand the frame of reference yes so for that frame which component of the boat will not appear to you vr correct vr is something which you won't be able to see <laughs> so what you will see is the vbr only isn't it yeah <laughs> which means <clears throat> in the frame of the water surface the line of heading becomes the line of motion but in the frame of ground let's say if someone is watching from the shore of the or bank of the river 
So an observer sitting on the bank of the river is trying to observe this event. They will see actually VB, not a VBR, not a VR. So line of motion is what you see from the ground. Line of heading is what you see from the frame of the river itself. Does it make sense to you? Tell me yes or no. Yes. So many times, <clears throat> many times, we try to solve the question in the frame of which frame? The floating object frame. Because we know that the calculation of time will be independent of the choice of frame. Yes or no? Calculation of time will be independent of choice of frame. Yes or no? Yes. Do you realize this? That time has nothing to do with the frame of reference? Yes. At least in the Galilean or Newtonian mechanics or physics, time is something which is independent of frame of reference. But as you move towards the, <coughs> the world of relativity, there time does not depend. Time does not depend on uh, time does depend on the frame of reference. In the relativity, the things are not same. So this is a huge difference from the Galilean to the, <clears throat> the Einsteinian physics. So we are talking about the normal physics. Okay. Understood. <clears throat> so the whole idea is the way to observe the motion may change, but the time calculation will be independent. Now tell me, <clears throat> if you know, understand this uh, relative motion, tell me <clears throat> to cross the river in the minimum time. To cross the river in the minimum time how the person should head what should be the line of heading the way i have shown or something else something else to cross the river in the minimum time tell me is we are going to contribute to the crossing of river Yes. Sir. Let's say if let's say if there is no line of let's say there is no VBR, will you ever cross because of you? No, sir. You all realize that you will never cross because of you. Yes. Rukwe, tell me. Do you realize that you will never cross because of you? Hello, hello. Are you there? Rugved, are you there? <coughs> Unmute yourself. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, your mic is not working. Okay, so you can answer the question here. <coughs> Do you realize that the VR or the flow velocity will never help you in crossing the river. Yes or no? Yes. So what will help you in crossing the river? It is the line of heading, isn't it? Yes, sir. So now tell me to cross the river in the minimum time, how you must head. The way I have shown or something else. So something else. Why? If I make the line of heading this way, will I cross in the minimum time? Yes, sir. So we just have to make uh, VB uh, like perpendicular to the x-axis. So that no, that's a big mistake. Okay. So I think the, this confusion is really genuine confusion. So now I'll give you a very nice example. <clears throat> Imagine you are in the Mumbai local. I think you all are from Mumbai now, except share. So you must have seen the local, more local. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. And in every local train, we have two gates. 
which is common to every train also. So imagine if you want to go from this gate to that gate, how you must proceed to move in the least time. How will you walk? Will you walk towards the gate or will you walk at some angle? And does it matter how fast the train is moving to cross the gate? <laughs> does it really matter? Imagine the entire train is open train. You want to go from this edge to the other edge and the train is in motion. <laughs> Does it really matter that to go from this end to the, that end, from this edge to that edge? To cross the width of the, you can say, train, how we should move to cross in the minimum time? So diagonally. Diagonally? We are totally confused now. So you, you, when you cross the, when you go from this gate to that gate, if you want to, Let's say you are on the left gate and then uh, suddenly there is an option that uh, the train will come, the platform will come on the right side. Will you move diagonally or will you move towards the gate? The towards. And does it matter like uh, how fast the train is moving to cross? No, sir. So how you must head it to cross it? <clears throat> Okay, so when you cross, okay, tell me, when you walk inside the train, that is V, B, R, or that is V, B? Tell me. When you move inside a train, what that represents the motion of the person? V, B, R, or V, B? So, so, V, B, R. V, B, R. So, how should be your V, B, R to cross in the minimum time? Straight only. Straight only. I mean, see, we'll just go towards the gate only. No? Why will move with diagonal? I don't know. Got it. <clears throat> see, even the if I try to trace your eventual motion from the maybe satellite. So look at this.
So anyways, okay. So try to understand the, the river surface as a moving train. Okay. It will give you the better perspective how things are happening. And imagine what you would have done in the train. So you'll get all the answer with ease. <laughs> okay. So let me tell you like no, what will but, happen. Uh, if the trainer wanted to watch the ride and we are walking straight, then won't it pull us to watch the ride? So listen carefully. The gate is also moving, no? So the gate is always with you, right? So no matter, so you want to cross the, if you go from this gate to this gate, the gate is also moving with you. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you just want to cross this. I'm not saying you have to, you know, uh, reach here. I'm saying you have to reach, no, I'm saying to go from this gate to this gate, what you will do? To cross the gate, to reach, go from this gate to that gate in the minimum time. This is what I'm asking. <laughs> so what will you do? Tell me. Okay. So you will walk, walk straight on. That's it. See, you want to come in the minimum time. Time is minimum. So you will go this way. In a reality, <clears throat> when you actually arrive on the other end, where is the actual gate present now? So in the reality, the gate has come somewhere here. No? I can draw the same. See, imagine that uh, water surface has come here. So when you actually reach there, <clears throat> the gate is somewhere here. Isn't it? And that is why in the ground frame, you appear to be going this way. Understood? Yes. And if the train is moving really fast, you will go even like this, more, more inclined. If train is moving really fast, really fast, really fast, really fast, really fast. So as you will grow, this will go this and this way, isn't it? Yes. Sir. But to cross the river, just to go from this bank to that bank, I'm not saying where in the bank, I'm just saying, Go from this side to that side in the minimum time. No matter where you land. No matter where you land, I'm saying. What I'm asking? Just to go from this side to another side. How we should walk. How we should swim. To reach in the minimum time, I'm saying. Okay. Are you getting my point, what I'm saying? Yes. Siddhant. Yes. Now, now you understood? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> the whole idea is okay. Will when you see the numericals, you will come to know what I am trying to explain in different way. So you need to understand there is something called line of fitting. Line of fitting is the direction in which you intend to move with respect to surface. So like with respect to the train, water, air. That's called the line of heading. So when the airplane moves, <clears throat> they have the ability to fly with respect to the air, not ground. Okay. But now let's say there is a wind also. So wind will change the course of motion. So your actual path, like the center of mass of the plane, will drift in a different direction in the ground frame. So the actual path, or you can say actual, <clears throat> uh, the line of motion will differ <coughs> if there is a wind. Wind means the air is in motion. So imagine instead of a river, we have a swimming pool. In the pool, what is you? In the pool, what is you? Tell me. What is the flow velocity of the water in the pool? Have you seen the swimming pool? Yes or no? So zero, no. Zero. <clears throat> now imagine you have the ability to, you know, move from one end of the pool to another end in, uh, let's say, one minute. <clears throat> so if it is Olympic size pool, then it might take uh, roughly one minute to cross it for a beginner. Not like a pro, not like Michael Phil. So anyone who goes for swimming, Sudan, Prasanth, Rukved, no one. Where I used to go. So have you experienced how much how much time you take to cross it? Sir, I think twenty thousand. 
20 seconds. Yeah. So it's a small pool mess. Or full Olympic pool. No, no, smaller than the usual. Olympic. Okay, anyway, let's say 20 seconds. Now tell me, if I put that pool in a cruise, let's say Angaria is going from Mumbai to Goa, there's a cruise and they have the infinity pool on the deck. Now, if you tried, let's say the same pool I have put or I have built on the same size of pool I have built on the, <clears throat> the cruise. And now you are going for the swim again. How much time will it take? Will it take 20 seconds or more than 20 seconds or less than 20 seconds? 20 only. 20 only. I mean, does it matter where the pool is? No, sir. The idea is <clears throat> the time you take to cross is independent of, you know, how the pool is moving. Let's say the, the this example is like if I set the pool into motion, that is what I'm doing. So a river is like a moving pool. So you can think like a one piece of a river as pool, which you are trying to swim into, <clears throat> but the pool is in motion. So of course, with respect to the pool, you will go on the other side, but the pool is not there, isn't it? So because the cruise is moving, let's say it's uh, moving at a speed of 100 miles per hour, in the open ocean. <clears throat> so when you cross the river, obviously cross the pool, in the ground frame, have you crossed only that much or have you moved much more or much less than that? 100 miles per hour, you will be taken, taken you know, in 20 seconds, you will go much ahead. So you might be traveling hundreds or so, hundreds of meter in the ground frame because of the cruise. So imagine if I, you know, if I set up this pool into some giant uh, Boeing plane. So a luxurious plane, which is in making actually. So maybe the future, <coughs> future of travel will be different. You will have the, <coughs> the open sky and all those. Things. It comes in some virtual uh, reality. So imagine there is a pool in the plane. Plane is, you know, like moving at a speed of thousands of kilometers per hour. So in 20 seconds, it will travel a lot actually. But you're not bothered about how fast the plane is moving. You're not bothered about how fast the train is moving, the cruise is moving. <clears throat> so I'm saying you want to go from one end of the pool to another end. So does it matter how fast the river is moving? No, sir. It doesn't matter. See, what I'm saying is you just want to cross it. You want to go from this end to that end. I'm not saying where. Okay. So there is something called line of heading. So what should the line of heading to cross in the minimum time? It's a straight. It's straight. It should be exactly perpendicular to the flow, right? Yes, sir. Because that is the minimum separation between the two edges. Do you realize this? Yes or no? So I hope now you realize. Yes, Try to understand this. We have to understand two facts. We have to understand two facts first. <laughs> if I call this as x axis, if I call this as y axis, and <clears throat> you just want to cross it, I mean, you have no other uh, intention than to cross it. So you want to cross the river. I'm not saying where you're landing. No, I'm not saying that. So when you go from this gate to this gate, <clears throat> in the frame of the, as I said, we have also a frame. I would name it log frame, the wooden log frame. So if I create a Y dash and X dash and O dash, which itself is going with its speed U. So for this guy, see that calculation time is very simple. No? We can always choose a frame which is making it simple. So for every person on the cruise, your speed remains same. So your VBR becomes a VBR for everyone, isn't it? Because every person on the cruise is also moving with the same speed as the cruise. So which speed they won't be able to see? The cruise velocity, isn't it? Yes, sir. But if I am locating you from the satellite, let's say 
you are part of some james bond uh, uh, detective or maybe some uh, spy and it's a very you know uh, big uh, you can say country politics on all going on between russia and america so if i am tracking you from the space then what i will see is the actual path what i will see is the line of motion isn't it yes sir because from space i will see the line of motion i won't be able to see the line of heading yes or no yes so sir. who all will see the line of heading who all will be seeing the line of heading only tell me so the people on the cruise exactly so in case of river and boat problem who all will be seeing the line of heading every every observer which is also floating along with water yes or no floating yes. means like <laughs> moving with the flow of water moving with the speed you in the direction of flow but if i am tracing if i am tracking you exactly from the space i won't be looking at you with the line of heading what i will be looking at you is the line of line motion of so are you able to you know differentiate the line of heading versus line of motion clearly tell me yes rugvet your mic is not working still it is totally clear huh? good so line of motion and line of heading is clear to all of you yes sir no i will tell you see whenever there is a calculation of time problem whenever you want to calculate time which frame is suitable ground frame like we will trace from the space or from the cruise which one is better <laughs> So from ground frame. Ground frame. See, I I want to know that how much time you take to cross the pool. Should I go to space satellite or should, I mean cruise is good enough? Cruise. <laughs> so which frame? The river frame or the ground frame? The river frame. River frame. The simple question, simple answer. See, if my intention is only to calculate time, why I should go to the ground or the space? better i'll go to the frame which is uh, giving me the line of because in the frame of the water the line of heading becomes the line of motion do you realize this yes sir every fellow moving along with the flow will only see the line of heading so for those guys the line of heading becomes the line of motion yes or no yes sir yes only for the fellow which are in the outside which are like in a space or maybe uh the stand by on the ground for them it is line of motion which will appear to them yes or no yes if this is clear then i can move ahead so <clears throat> try to understand for the the log frame if someone will try to swim this way it will appear this way only if someone will try to move this way it will appear this way only i mean the way you try to move it will appear exactly the way you try to, i mean intend to move in the frame of the water in the frame of water your motion is plain and simple the way you will try to swim the way you will appear it is the ground frame which will look different so if i <laughs> try to define the line of motion line of motion what i can say it is the direction in which <clears throat> the boat or swimmer intend to move just mm -hmm. to
Okay. So it is the direction in which the board swimmer intend to move with respect to reverse surface. Why I'm saying surface? Because the, the bed of the river is, is still at rest. The, all the flow which you see is the surface phenomena. The river is not flowing everywhere. It is not flowing at the depth. As you go down, it's a calm. So same with the ocean also. If you go inside the ocean, you don't see any turbulence. Do you see? So if someone has gone for the, the scuba diving or is snorkeling, you must have seen it's a very calm inside, isn't it? So those divers who you know go down the ocean, it's a very, very calm. It's complete peace. I mean, you can spend the 30 seconds, it looks like one hour. So many people feel that one minute is like a lifetime. Okay. <clears throat> So I think I spent only, I think maybe maximum two minutes. It was like we are there for years. So much calmness. So it is the direction in which the boats we might intend to move with respect to the river surface. Okay. The bottom of a river or ocean, everything is very calm. The flow is the surface event. It generally happens on the surface. <laughs> we do have something called the underwater currents. So these currents are, you know, develop uh, across the globe, maybe due to the earth rotation. And it is because of inertia, it is continuing forever. And these underwater currents are sometimes lifeline of a particular demography or you can say geography. So in colder countries, we, we have the, you know, Gulf stream mostly, you know, see, look at the nature. The country is colder, but they have got the Gulf stream, the hot water stream. And the country which are very hot, they have got the, the cold water stream. So nature is very nice to everyone. Okay. Anyway. So it is a direction in which the boats you may intend to move with respect to <coughs> river surface. I hope this is clear. Yes. Next. So now what a kind of question will come across? So I'll just do something more. So let's say if you try to intend to move this way. If you intend to move this way, you will remain. See, your your orientation will not change. <laughs> so let me do this first. Uh, so you, you will actually move this way. So your orientation remains this way, but your central mass will move this way. So it looks like <laughs> you will feel that you are always going forward. But the water flow will take you towards the right. And you will not realize this. This is called the drift. So you will be drifted by the flow. And uh, it's very difficult to you know, uh, understand the drift while swimming. It's very difficult. So there are many, uh, there is a very famous, uh, I think, competition in the world called the crossing of the English Channel. So they have set the Guinness Book of World Record for crossing the English Channel. I mean, it's a ocean, I think. Have you heard this English Channel? Anyone? Maybe. Yes, I have heard. So the tip of your, see the direction of your motion, the direction where you intend to move, this is your <laughs> line of heading. The arrow is representing what? Line of heading, right? And the actual path of the center mass, the center of the body is actually going this way. This is called line of motion. Yes or no, tell me. So the line of yes. motion is clear. <clears throat> See, if I look at the, the initial point, 
of the object. And if you look at the end point, and if I look at the displacement as per the flow direction, this is the displacement in the direction of flow. You can call X. This X is called drift. So what is the drift? How to define drift? <laughs> Tell me what is drift? How to put into literature, like the right way to define it? So how to define drift? Tell me. Can we can we say it is a displacement along the flow while crossing the river? So in the time yes. which you take in see listen in the time which you take to cross the river, whatever you move along the flow that is your drift. So we can define as it is the. displacement along the flow while crossing the river. Understood? You have to be very clear with the definition. <laughs> what is defined and how it is defined and in what context we need to define. So drift is the displacement we you see now if I'm if I'm saying displacement only it's wrong because your displacement is this line isn't it? Do you realize this? This is your displacement <laughs> because this is the beginning of the journey this is the end of the journey. So this is your actual displacement. But what is X? Is it displacement? Or it's a component of displacement? Tell me. A component of displacement. Which component? The component in the flow? Direction of flow? Isn't it? Yes, sir. And that's why the definition of drift is given this way. It is the displacement along the flow. You see, I will tell you why definitions are very important. It gives you, you know, a simple way of remembering the entire concept at once. You need not to, you know, work up the formula. <clears throat> if you know the definition, you can derive the formula. So I always emphasize the fact that it is always definition to derivation to application. So make a habit of remembering the definition from this moment onwards. Don't wait for the, your board examination. Every definition which I give, I want you to simply understand and remember by heart it. Through understanding, not through mugging. <laughs> so is it very difficult to remember the definition? Or it's easy? So then, Sir, so easy. So, can I expect that you can tell me the definition after uh, six months? Hopefully, yeah. So, drift is clear. So, what is the drift? It is the displacement along the flow while crossing the river. I hope this is clear to all of you. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Let's say if a person is starting from this bank, this end of the river, and you want to land here. So landing here means what? 
you do not want any drift yes or no yes sir so to have zero drift what should be the line of motion opposed to line of motion motion not heading i want to go here exactly <laughs> sir line of motion should be perpendicular to the this is the line of motion velocity. so what should be the line of heading sir diagonally left very good see if i know this is my line of motion then i have to create the heading this way because my u will support me this way so these two will eventually give you net value this way do you realize this so if the now listen this carefully if the destination is known to you in solve while solving the numerical if you know the destination so let's say you are living in a very nice uh, uh, riverside uh, location you have uh, your own resort you run your resort let's say in mahabaleshwar or maybe somewhere so in mahabaleshwar there is a very nice uh, river called the koyana koyana river i think okay and there is a the dam the there is a electric project actually over the river and <clears throat> families live across the river i have seen those families also i have met those people so they live across the river okay so during the tourism time <clears throat> uh, they have their boat any way for their own conveyance and uh, to meet each other they keep on crossing they go every day now the location is clear to you so you know that so this is your home let's say you see you you stay here and your relative stays here <coughs> on the other side of it then one fine day you get a call that okay someone is not uh, well you need to come immediately so <coughs> if you try to cross in the minimum time so let's say if you stay here okay and if you want to cross if you want to reach here if you try to go this way you will actually be thrown this way now let's say there is no commute which can let take you here you have to walk all the way from here to here that's not a good thing right so what you decide is you want to exactly reach here from here what will do you will try to head this way and the flow will take you this way and you can exactly reach the person so what i'm trying to say that if you know the the source and the destination then to reach directly from source to destination the line joining the source and destination should also be the line of what can you guess if i want to go from source to destination exactly like this then this line should be my line of motion motion excellent so do you all realize this rugved and prashant sir tell me do you realize this yes sir see if you have this clarity that okay this is the source and this is the destination you want to go there exactly the line of motion must be that line isn't it i hope this is clear okay so yes <clears throat> so i i would put this as a note to directly go from source <clears throat> to destination across the bank of a river So to go the direction to go, okay. what I wrote to go from
to go from <coughs> source to destination across the bank of river <coughs> the line of motion must be along the line joining source and destination understood it is clear yes sir so I think we are done with the theory. Now we can just do the problem. So, Rugved, how many questions are you solving every day from kinematics? Tell me honestly. Less than 5, more than 5, less than 10, more than 10, less than 15, more than 15, less than 20, more than 20. Less than 5. So, it could be 1 also, right? <clears throat> or it could be 0 also. So you're not solving, which means you're not studying. Really bad. This is not what I'm expecting. Kinematics is not something you can say physics. It is something in which you develop your analytical skill. And once you develop a skill here, it will help you throughout physics. So don't take this as a chapter or something, okay, as a part of the course. No, it is the life of this course. So try to solve as much as possible. Okay. Let me tell you, when I was a student like you, from the chapter of kinematics, I have solved roughly 450 questions of kinematics. And after that, I never found any chapter difficult in physics. So I simply solved 450 numericals, but that took me almost one month. <laughs> you have you are studying this chapter for more than one month, roughly two months. I think still we haven't solved more than 200 questions. So kinematics is something that you just keep on solving. Don't think about a left, right, or center. Just keep on solving. If you're not enjoying kinematics, then you will not enjoy 50% of physics anyway. Because there's no question without kinematics. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so I'll start with something very generic. I'll, I'll give you the two perspectives. One, the component way of writing uh, thing. Another. So let's say if you if you take the the direction of flow if you take the direction of flow as u <laughs> and uh, if you head like this so the u is like by default and see the V we are going to add actually. So if I take the angle as in general theta, so I'll just first show you the component way of thinking. <laughs> so we write the the velocity of the uh, the boat or river, whatever, in the x direction. So what is the velocity in the x direction? Mm -hmm. So let me make a boat that's better. Mm -hmm. So tell me guys, what is VBX? The X component velocity is how much? V cos theta. Hmm? 
the x component of velocity of the boat is how much? What is the x component? So uh, Vb cos theta plus u. I'm looking for Vbx. Vbx means in the ground frame, what is the x component? Vb represents the ground frame, right? Yes, sir. So Vb cos theta. Vb cos theta? So he, you have two velocity, u and v both. Your net net x component. U. U is your x component only. That's it. This is v. This is also v. This is also theta. So the x component means this is no. So what is your x component? Total. U plus V cos theta. It's common since it's U plus V cos theta. So U is anyway there and V will contribute V cos theta in the x direction. And both will add up because they are in the same direction. Do you realize this? What is the x contribution of the V part? V cos theta. What is the x contribution of U part? U. So what is the net x component of the, the boat or the river? U plus V cos theta. Do you realize this yes or no? Yes. And what is V B Y? V sin theta. Only V sin theta. Because U will never contribute. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Crossing the river means. <coughs> The displacement, which displacement we need to cover to confirm that I have crossed the river. Why? Why? Because when you cross the river, you confirmly you know the y displacement, but you are not sure about the x displacement. So to calculate the time to cross the river, we always write the y component. So to calculate time. <laughs> to cross the river, to calculate time to cross the river, we write y equals to <coughs> uit because there is no acceleration, but it could be acceleration also. Let's say there is a the windy uh, location in which the wind is creating some acceleration. So, I mean, in question, you have to modify as they create a new situation. Always remember that when we solve a numerical, we have some underlying situation that we exploit in a question of, let's say, J. <laughs> they will bring or customize the situation and those who know how to derive from the scratch, they will be comfortable doing that also. So here there is no acceleration, neither X nor Y. So this is non-accelerating motion crossing the river. So we can simply write displacement, the y displacement is equal to, uh, I can convert this better way as a v b y into t, something like that. Okay. Symbolically, I can make it uh, easier. So I can just call this as uh, v x and I can call simply this as v y to make it easier. So tell me guys, <laughs> if there is no accession, this is the relation, correct? So for total time, the Y must be how much? So depending on how much you have crossed, the time will be Y by VY. So to cross the river, the Y must be how much? A small d. And the VY is how much? Tell me guys. V center. That's a common sense. <clears throat> I know that it is the V center which can take you up, which can let you cross the river. That's common sense. The X cannot contribute in crossing the river. So now you can see it from here only. <laughs> the minimum time you will get where? 
when the sine theta is maximum correct yes because the d is constant the ability of the swimmer or the the power of the <coughs> engine of the boat is constant and our fixed power will will represent the fixed value v so it is the sine theta which can make all the difference and to minimize the time we have to maximize the sine theta which means what is the maximum value of sine theta one one so theta will be Ninety degree, yes or no? Isn't it? Yes, sir. And this is what this is what we're going to prove that okay, it is the ninety. It is the right angle motion which can give you the minimum time. This is what we expected, right? <laughs> so to cross the river in the minimum time, the line of motion, the line of heading should be. <laughs> Perpendicular. Perpendicular. If I designate some direction, let's, if, let's say if I call this as east, um, this is north. And if I ask you, what should be the line of heading to cross the river in the minimum time? The line of heading to cross the river in the minimum time. So perpendicular to the x axis. The north, right? North, no, north. Correct? Yes, sir, north. north. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. So they will give you the answer like a north, south, east, west. You can tell. Okay, anyway. So this is the time in general, time taken to taken to cross the river. Okay. All right. No. So we can make this question more specific to certain type of problem. So minimum time to cross the river. <clears throat> so we now we are clear, like we have discussed many times. So minimum time to cross the river means the line of heading should be like this. This is the line of heading. In short, I can write L O H. Okay. And the, <coughs> the U is by default. This is U, this is V. So you will go something like this. So <coughs> this angle we can find easily. What is tan theta? What is tan theta in this triangle? This is like a this is like a velocity yeah this is like a velocity triangle so this is v by u okay. this is d this is theta so this is also theta so you can find the drift just like this so what is the the drift that's called capital d as drift so what is the d value So tan theta equals to also, you can add also tan theta equals to d by d. Yes. Sir. 
So this implies that capital D the drift equals to how much? If you can get any answer you want. And if I call this as the displacement S, what is S? So we can write uh, S cos theta, S sin theta equals to D. So D by sin theta. Correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so we can get any answer just from the triangle itself. Uh, if you want to solve this by component of by the formula, so we have to use the right answer. So first of all, time to cross the river is D by V. Then the D is defined as the the drift is defined as the displacement in the direction of flow. So we need to take the, <coughs> the Vx into T. That's it. And Vx here is only U. And T is divided. So we get the same answer. <coughs> I hope this is clear. Any doubt in this, tell me. <coughs> so you can do it by triangle also, like a vector triangle, <coughs> in which you can draw the triangle one for the, the velocities and then for the next part. Quickly, I'll finish. Okay. So your next condition is called condition for zero drift. I do not want any drift. So first of all, you need to understand that this is only possible when V is more than U. Isn't it? Because if U becomes more than V, then no matter how you cross, if, even if you try to move this way, the because V is less than U, it, it will eventually go this way. So drift cannot be avoided or prevented if the, the flow becomes bigger than uh, V. <laughs> but if V is bigger than U, if you can really swim <coughs> or uh, row the boat faster than the flow velocity, then only the zero drift condition is possible. So for zero drift, we have realized one thing. What do we have realized? <coughs> the line of motion should be what? Tell me. Perpendicular, straight. Exactly. So the line of heading should be like this, something like this. And the resultant So from vector chapter, you might have realized that uh, this was the case. <clears throat> if the resultant vector is like this. So resultant is perpendicular to the is smaller vector, right? I don't know whether you remember this fact or not. <laughs> So this is the rational flow can talk. <laughs> anyway, how much time it will take to cross the river? So time to cross the river is how much? <laughs> D upon? Tell me. V cos theta. Now, theta is not known to us. We can calculate the theta. How? <laughs> so, if you know the line of motion, then resolve every velocity vector. Resolve every velocity vector 
resolve every velocity vector along the line of motion and perpendicular to the line of motion. <coughs> so along the line of motion, what do we have? V cos theta and perpendicular. So what do you want? You want only this much, no? So these two quantities must cancel out each other, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> So for zero drift, for zero drift, what we can say? The U must be equal to? Very simple. See, let me tell you. <laughs> the moment you know the line of motion, the Velocity must be along that line, which means the net component perpendicular to that line must be cancelling out each other. Then only this is feasible or possible. Understood? So you must be equal to V center. And this will give you the sign data. What is sign data? And luckily you can see the U by V is less than one, which means yeah, it's correct answer. If u becomes more than v, it means it is impossible because sine theta cannot be more than one. Correct? So <clears throat> you got the sine theta. Now we can go back and calculate the time. So what is the time now? D upon v cos theta we can write as one minus. And so you will get. So you can see the time has increased actually. So definitely you will take more time to cross it, <clears throat> isn't it? Yes. I hope this is clear, right? So there are many ways in which we can solve. I mean, of course, this is the one way I'll show you some other way of solving. Let's call method one. Continued on the next page. Method two. Let's say I want to do it purely mathematical terms without any emotion. I know the definition of x. X is defined as <coughs> the Vx into T, right? And the Vx in the diagram which I have done, what is Vx? Can you tell me what is Vx? The net x component of velocity is how much? Assuming I don't know which one cancel or not. What is Ux here? Uh, Vx here. Come on, tell me what is Vx? Minus and what is Vy? Because keep in mind. So Vx connect is u minus V sine theta into T, T is D by V cos theta. This is how we write. And we want zero. So put X equals to zero, we'll get the answer. Implies, that's it. That's common sense. So for X to be zero, this is the only way. And you can get the answer from there. Once you get this answer, you can find the time and all. So T is anywhere D by V cos theta. So okay. After this, it's a symbol. Mm -hmm. Can we do it geometrically? The answer is a big yes. And to show you the geometrical interpretation. 
it is very simple <coughs> so this is the line of heading so in the frame of a river this is your path so let's say if you take time t to cross the river you can say this is vt isn't it in the same time the flow will take you here actually and because the flow is speed is used so this is ut and this is d use pythagoras you are done so v square t square equals to d square plus And that is just by the writing the displacement right. <laughs> so we know VBR plus VR equals to uh, VB. That's it. So if I multiply with T both sides. And VB, because we know this is VB. <coughs> so VBT, while crossing the river, VBT becomes D. So by plotting, I mean, just drawing this uh, vector, you can get a triangle because this triangle is a right angle triangle so everything is very easy to calculate right <coughs> isn't it yes sir. so there are many ways you can always solve the way you want so you can always treat the line of heading separately so you first move as per the line of heading then add the the contribution of the flow take the result and you will get all the answers So the next part is <laughs> what is the next part? Okay, so now we'll take the next case. I don't know the number. So now the question is, so generally during flooding, what happens? The, the water is released from dam in many cases. And the dam water will, you know, uh, fall and become part of the river. The flow will suddenly become really high. I mean, it is difficult to control the flow. So that is the, called the case when U is much bigger than V. So if U is much bigger than V, it means you cannot avoid drift. Drift will happen for sure. So in this case, zero drift is not possible. Then what is possible? So we talk about the minimum drift. Once again, zero <coughs> drift is not possible. What we can say is minimum drift. Now to minimize the drift, you will try at least. 
So if this is u, so even to minimize the drift, how you will try to head or choose a tutor like this to minimize drift? What will you do? Sir, obtuse. Obtuse on you. So we have no choice, but we can at least minimize. See, we cannot prevent it, but that's fair enough. <coughs> we can minimize. Again, there are many methods to solve. I'll show you the vector trick later on. First, we'll try to understand through the basic. So I can write the answer. What is x now? <coughs> the same answer which you wrote earlier. There is no difference at all in writing. U minus V sine theta into D by V cos theta. Am I right? This is what we wrote earlier. In the previous case, since V was more than U, so th there was chance of equaling and there was chance of zero drift. But now what happens if, uh, if V is less than U? Then V sin theta will be even lesser. So can this term be zero? No. So it means <coughs> I cannot get the zero drift for sure. So <coughs> this I can rewrite as uh, u by u d by v sec theta. I will multiply inside minus d tan theta. <coughs> so I can see clearly that x is a function of theta. And from maxima and minima, how to minimize x? So for x minimum, what we must do? Differentiate and equate. So differentiate with respect to what? Dx by? Tell me, Siddhant. Dx by? What is variable here? So t theta. Yeah. Very good. So can you guys differentiate and tell me after equating to zero what you're getting? Everyone, please. So sign theta is v by u.
Yeah, Rukhved, you can leave. Yeah. So what is it, Siddhant? Thank you, Rajiv, to V by you. Correct. That's the right answer. Question, sir, you got the answer? No, Now, if you don't know the differentiation, then how I can help tell me? Yeah, that only you equate to zero. Right? Yeah, equate to zero, no? What is the problem? If you equate to zero, sometimes you cancel it out. <coughs> so GX by G theta will give you U D by V sec theta into tan theta minus D sec square theta. This is what you got? Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's simple. Right? Ud, d will cancel. Tan. So Ud by v, <coughs> sec tan equals to. You got the answer? I actually forgot to create a figure. What kind of mistake is this? Forgot to equal to zero. Okay. Anyway, sine by cos equals to one by cos, which means sine theta equals to one. So sine theta is v. So I hope this part is clear. So yes, now sir. you know that sine theta is V by U is going to give you the, <coughs> the minimum depth. Of course, we will not get the maximum depth by this particular way of reasoning. <laughs> so drift cannot be avoided, but it can be minimized. <laughs> and because U is much bigger, let me make the U really big. So even though you try to avoid, minimize, you will eventually go this way. So you will have some drift. So the resultant of these two vectors <coughs> will be like this. Let me draw. So, however, how you try, you cannot escape. This is the minimum drift. The minimum drift you will have this much. Okay. Understood. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. So this is how much? This is V. This is U. And see, if you look at the sun data, sun data is V by U. Now, this is V by U is only possible when this is 90 degree and this is theta. But I'll prove it other way around. This is also a way of looking at things, but this will, something will forget. I'll give you the other way. So once you get the <coughs> sine theta, what is the time of uh, crossing the river? So let's calculate the time to cross the river first. In this case, time to <coughs> cross the river.
<clears throat> so time to cross the river. What we can say? So t equals to d by v cos theta, right? Yes, sir. Now, if you substitute here this time, your answer will change. Why? The v will not cancel this time because this is v by u itself, isn't it? So, what is your answer? So if you compare to the just previous answer for zero drift, uh, so we have got, uh, I can write like this, something like this, something like this, not exactly, something like this with a V before you, we had the answer before uh, in case of zero drift. Now we have U by V, a, a factor being multiplied here. So both answers are not same, zero drift and Minimum drift are different cases. And they have different answer. You can see it. Okay. But because we cannot avoid drift, as I said, what is the <coughs> what is the minimum drift here? Tell me what is the minimum drift? So what is the x minimum? So you know the formula of x, which we have written earlier, right? And we know the theta also. Can you substitute the sine theta cos theta and get the answer? What is x minimum? So we can add the formula u minus v sine theta into d upon v cos theta. I'm writing this way again because I can uh, substitute uh, v, uh, sine and cos. Sine theta is uh, v by uh, sine theta is how much? v by u, right? <coughs> and uh, time we got, time any way we got. So I think uh, I can uh, replace this entire d by v cos theta by the answer which I got u d by v under root of u square minus v square. Right, guys? Can we write like this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So we got something really interesting. U square minus V square by U into U D by V. <coughs> U square minus V square. So this U gets cancelled. And we, this we can also write it in a nice way. D by V into under root of U square minus V square. Am I right? So can we simplify like this? Tell me. Yes, sir. Do you all realize this? Yes. Okay. Sir, I would doubt. Sir, yeah. uh, to find x minimum, can we uh, like maximize theta and then? No, no, because theta is appearing everywhere. Now it is in the denominator. It is in the numerator. So how we can say only one part will give the answer. Okay. And we cannot say maximizing theta. We are maximizing the, the entire expression. <coughs> or we are minimizing the entire expression. <coughs> okay. So if it is only appearing at one particular location, then we can decide. But if it is appearing in the numerator, denominator, everywhere, <coughs> so we need to look for the entire expression and then we can go for minimizing it. Clear? Yes. Okay. So the next. Can we do it in a different way? Method two. So we can do it in terms of vector very easily. It's very famous and nice answer.
next <clears throat> so you can see we know that u is more than v try to understand the concept how we solve in vector so let's say this is u i, I have make it really big this is u and v is a small vector and because you are trying to uh, draw here it here i will i will draw it here so <clears throat> what could be the possible direction of uh, v <coughs> the answer is anywhere on the circle around the tip right yes sir so why don't we draw a circle of a radius equivalent of the v so what i'll do is i'll draw a circle here Try this very carefully. So I have drawn a circle. Imagine the v v is like this. If v is like this, then what will happen? The resultant is like this. So your drift will be oh my god, much bigger. In a way, you are supporting the drift in this case, which is anyway bad. In a good estimate <coughs> to minimize the drift you may try to go this way but the problem is if you try to go this way you can see the drift this is the resultant vector so the drift is also going much bigger so to minimize the drift we can uh, move the tip of the arrow and you can see drift will decrease Drift is decreasing, yes or no? Tell me, guys. Yes, sir. Decreasing. Decreasing. Oh my God! Can we go beyond this? No, the answer sir. is no. We cannot go beyond this because <clears throat> beyond this, no vector is. I mean, the length of the vector is v only, so I cannot go beyond this. This is the extreme limit i can minimize so the whole idea is <coughs> you can realize on your own that the minimum the minimum minimization is only possible when the resultant is tangent to the circle that's it <coughs> and this is 90 degree. and this is v since i said the uh, we are taking the angle with respect to vertical <laughs> If you draw a line like this, and uh, if you call this angle as theta, this will be 90 minus theta, this will be theta. And now this is the condition for the minimum drift. I cannot have drift less than this. So <laughs> we got the condition for the minimum drift. And clearly, you can see something that uh, in the triangle O A B, I can get my answer directly. So sine theta is how much? V by U. That is the condition. So when you know U and V, then the minimum value will get is this much. Okay. Okay. Is this clear, guys? Yes, sir. How to minimize? So you can draw a circle of a radius v and then just draw the tangent that will give you the minimum drift. There is no other way out. Because the drift will be minimized only when you go this way, right? <coughs> but we cannot go beyond this point because if I go beyond this point, then such a resultant cannot be obtained by the values which we have. I hope this is clear. It is difficult, I know. You realize this. So, question, sir, do you realize this? Yes, sir. 
and uh, because this is uh, theta, <coughs> this will be also theta. And uh, yeah, so we know all the answers. We know sine value. So uh, this is x. Uh, <laughs> so this is x and this is d. This is x minimum actually. So tan theta is how much? <laughs> tan theta is d by, d by x, by minimum. x So the x minimum is how much? d by sin theta into cos theta that's it am i right tell me guys it's clear yes sir okay mm. So, what is sine theta? Okay, let me put and let me check if I'm getting d by. <laughs> so, sine theta is v by u and cos theta is 1 minus v square by u square. So the answer is u square minus v square d by u. See, this is one line answer, right? So why did we take the length of the radius as b? Because the resultant of two vector will be because of u and v only, na? so hard to find the resultant. So we can be turned around any direction. See, u is fixed. I want to know which direction of v will give me minimum answer, right? <laughs> I want to know which direction of V will give me the minimum drift. This is my question, correct? Yes. Now, <laughs> because I am not sure about the direction of V, so I can turn in any direction. So what are the possible direction of V? Anywhere yeah, in the circle? Yeah. So now the question is, which direction you must choose to minimize it? So take any point of the circle and join the origin. So which point will give you the minimum drift? You can check. Imagine if you choose this point. What do you think? The drift will become more or less? More. Choose any point here. This point? More or less? More. This point? More. This point? Infinity? So which point will give you the minimum? The tangent. Exactly. So now you know why I have taken the tangent? So the value of V is given to us or we are yeah, just the, the, the V is given. Theta is not known. Theta is the con okay. confusion. Okay. <laughs> so line of heading, I am trying to see, I am trying to find the line of heading which can minimize that. <laughs> Understood? Yes, sir. Now, if you do the same thing, um, method four, if you have a bigger V, let's say U is small and V is large. If V is bigger, then you can draw a circle at the tip of this uh, vector and the radius of the circle is more than this. Imagine this way. <clears throat> so V can be anywhere. Now, can we have the zero? So, what do we want now? We want the zero drift, right? And you can clearly see that the zero drift is possible in a way. If I keep my V like this, <laughs> this could be the direction of uh, motion, therefore. You can have zero drift here. And this is pretty much simple you can, because this is theta. This is theta. So sine theta is. You see, there are many ways of solving. Anyway, not. So this is like an advanced. So 
So if you can really digest this uh, diagram and this uh, way of solving, it's a big thing. Is this clear? Tell me. Yes. yes. Fine. So now I'll go to the next concept quickly. So we are done with the river and boat. There is one more question in, in which acceleration is there. Yeah. What happens if we do have acceleration? Mm -hmm. So if I have shared the sheet of a relative motion with you guys, can you open? Now go to the bottom motion. Yeah. Go to page number 22. <laughs> page number 22. Can you see the page number 22? Yes. So we can start with the question one. Question one, question two. And question six, we will solve. I will solve question six. So first you solve the one and two. I'm giving you 10 minutes to solve, then I'll solve.
Answer. Done. Which question? Yes, sir. Do? With the first. Okay. Very good. <coughs> Prasun, so you got the answer for first. No. First part is what? A man can swim in still water that is V given with a speed three meter per second. So V is three meter, right? Uh, So in one second, uh, uh, we have to find the locus, right? The locus means what? Find the x coordinate, y coordinate, and replace the common variable, which is sine and cos eventually, right? So I think it must be something like an ellipse or parabola. What it is coming? <clears throat> so you are not getting it. In one second, wherever you can reach. What is the locus of that, right? I think they have written the x and y coordinate. This is why this is x, right? Chidant? Yes. Okay. <coughs> the speed of u is given how much? One minute. And, and v can be anywhere. So I can go v at angle theta. And theta can vary from 0 to 180. So depending on what is theta, I can go anywhere. No? So what is the x coordinate? What is the x displacement as a function of time t? So in one second, time is given. So in one second, x, x, x right is <coughs> vx into t, right? So in general, what is vx here? V cos theta plus u. And t is given one second. So I got x equals to u plus v cos theta. So I can write x minus u by v equals to cos theta. What about y coordinate? So y becomes v sin theta into t. So we can got a sin theta equals to y by v. And we want to find the locus, which means I don't want theta. So I can say sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1. Correct? So x minus u by v whole square plus <laughs> y by v. It is the equation of circle actually. And V is the <coughs> radius. Understood? Yes, sir. That's simple. And the other way of thinking is simple. In the frame of river, in one second, you will travel how much? The flow will take you U meter. And because of V, you can make a circle. So in one second, you can travel V circle radius anywhere, right? So your center will have the value. What is the center? The center you can see is X will be. So X is uh, X minus U. So its center will be somewhere here. The Y coordinate is zero. So you can travel something like this in one second. So the way you can understand. This is the locus. Now you can solve the question number two. Is this question clear to both of you? Yes. So do the next question. I don't know what is the next question. So the second one. 
Ya sé que no. Practice this question. So can you show the diagram for the second one? Sure, let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, two swimmers A and B, one located on one side and other on the other side of the river, are situated at a distance D from each other. Okay. Line joining them make, is making an angle theta with the direction of uh, direction per perpendicular to the flow. Yeah, so this question is uh, diagram part is really simple. You can do this. Draw the river first. Two guys are A and B. Living. And from the direction which is per perpendicular to the flow. It makes an angle theta and this is D. Thanks. You can I do it further? Yes, ma'am. Do this.
What is the answer? So the first part I got, I'm on the second one. Okay. Tell me questions. Are you getting the question first of all? Sir, I'm not getting how to proceed. What is the first question? Tell me. What are they asking? Find the time after which they will meet. So who is moving? Both are moving? Yeah. Towards each other. Towards each other. So that is their line of motion and line of heading. What is that? Line of heading, na? So both is starts swimming along each other. Is this what we are seeing? Can you read the question? Tell me. Just read the question. Let me hear it. So two swimmers, A and B, one located on one side and the other on the another side of a river are situated at a distance D from each other. Line joining them is making an angle theta with the direction perpendicular to the flow. The speed of each swimmer with respect to still water is U and speed of the river or flow is VR. Both A and B start swimming at the same time in the direction parallel to the line AB towards each other. And they keep on swimming in the same direction then find the time after which they'll meet. So see, time is simply D by 2U. Because see, <coughs> the line of heading is sufficient to get the time calculation, right? In the frame of river, this is the actual path. So actual path doesn't matter, isn't it? Yes. Actual path doesn't matter. You just solve in the frame of the water. So in the frame S dash, which is moving with VR, they will continue moving this way only. So they will collide after what time? D by two U, that's simple. <clears throat> Do you realize this first part? <clears throat> time is always same in every frame. So I will solve in the frame of river. And if you remember, I said, that the line of heading becomes the line of motion in the frame of river. Isn't it? Yes, sir. So that's it. What is the next question? <clears throat> Find speed of the river so that the path of the two swimmers with respect to the ground becomes perpendicular to each other. perpendicular to each other right yeah so add vr here and add vr here for this guy <coughs> for this guy so okay once again last one was there find the vr such that So, so that the path of the two swimmers with respect to the ground becomes perpendicular to each other. Perpendicular to each other. Okay, okay, okay. So the resultant of the two are mutually perpendicular, right? Isn't it? Yes, sir. Hmm. I mean, I have a very simple trick. I can give you one line. Answer. The trick is the velocity of A, can I write as uh, VR plus U vector? Let's, I'm taking this as U vector. Then how to write velocity of B? Any guess? Because if I call this as U vector, this will become minus U vector. Because they're exactly opposite, isn't it? In vector form. Yes, sir. And that is why what they are saying that VA is per pentor to VB implies VA dot VB must be zero. Correct? Yes, sir. So VR plus U 
डॉट वी आर माइनस यू मस्ट बी जीरो इफ यू टेक दिस इट विल कम वी आर स्क्वायर माइनस यू स्क्वायर ओह दैट सिंपल आई गोट वी आर को सी इज इज आंसर यस सर सो सिंपल isn't it so in the previous question we did to you because they are in the same direction right yeah so the relative velocity will add up na yeah u and u will come to you see this is not we are writing the value in vector form if you write it will be u vector plus minus u vector actually u vector minus minus u vector which is to u vector so the modulus is to you so the vector is important and if you know how to express in vector things are very easy so of course there are many other uh, ways of solving this uh, the other way of solving is like this v a equals to v r i cap and then because this is u given right so i can write as listen carefully <coughs> u sin theta minus i cap U sin theta minus i cap. So I'm just writing minus uh, u sin theta i cap and minus u cos theta j cap. This is V A. What is V B? V R i cap plus uh, u sin theta i cap and plus u cos theta j cap. What next? <coughs> These are mutually perpendicular. So now I can also write V A dot V B. And because you know how to do this calculation, you can you will get the same answer. The way you proceed, it doesn't matter. Okay. Got it, guys? Yes. yes. Hmm. All right. Any other question? Okay. So I think we can go to the next. I mean, uh, I'm leaving that as homework. Uh, and you can solve at home solution is also given below don't see it just try to solve i is still till date i haven't seen any solution so i don't know how they have solved <laughs> anyway so i'll go to the next question for the wind plane problem wind plane problem okay <coughs> so it is similar to the river boat problem the only problem is when you solve the wind and plane problem you cannot afford drift so let's say if <coughs> if the origin is the source source airport and destination is something in case of flight we have a well defined runway on which you can land you cannot land on anywhere you cannot go and land on the western access highway or maybe in some jungle or some river <laughs> so <clears throat> as a pilot it is my job to take my plane exactly from the source to destination now can we afford drift in this case is it okay to land here or land here no sir so in case of river boat problem we were calculating drift <clears throat> but the problem is okay here we cannot afford drift we have to always keep the zero drift condition and also we not to we not to worry much because the velocity of plane is much 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 bigger than the velocity of wind and therefore we can always achieve the zero drift condition the only thing is uh the fuel consumption will be more okay so we have to consume a lot of fuel to do that okay 
So how we fly? So imagine you have a plane. So I'm also assuming there's a wind just to give you the actual idea. So let's say the wind is this way. So now this wind will also act as a support also because the VW cos alpha will support you in reaching the destination. But the dangerous part is the component which is perpendicular to this line. This is VW. And the problem is if I do not take much care about VW sin alpha, I will be drifted away from the destination which you, we would like to avoid at any cost. So VW sin alpha will take you away. And uh, what you want is the line joining the source and destination as the line of motion. So I hope this part is clear. We want this to be line of motion now. Because we want to go from source to destination, so that must be the line of motion. So, as a you know pilot, we have to think about the line of heading. So, what is the line of heading to achieve this task? Should it be right of green line or left of green line? Where? Or along the green. Tell me. This way. This way or this way? Sir, but here the velocity of wind is very minute, like negligible. Not negligible, it is having some significance. So, however small it may be, like let's say even if the over the long distance, even if you drift by let's say uh, 500 meter, you can land on the Dharavi instead of uh, Mumbai airport. Isn't it? Like even few yes. kilometers here and there is good enough, no? Do you realize this? Yes. So it is small, but uh, it is not something which you can ignore. Because over the distance, because you're traveling in thousands of kilometers anyway, over the entire distance, even a drift of uh, one kilometer is not uh, acceptable. So compared to 1000 km journey, 1 km is nothing. Can we ignore it? No, sir. No, we cannot ignore it. Correct? So <laughs> while solving numerical, we have to think this uh, as well. So the plane must be heading this way. Yes. Why sir. like this? Because we want to cancel the V W sine alpha. So this component, which I can resolve. So this will be the V plane, Sanjita. So for <clears throat> zero drift condition, what do you think so? What is the condition, tell me guys? Come on, tell me. Which component must be cancelling out each other? VW sin alpha. Is equal to VP sin theta? VP sin theta. Very good. So VW sin alpha is VP sin theta. So the, if this is happening, mm -hmm. so this will give me, see, alpha is given to us or known to us because the wind flow is known to us in advance. So, as a pilot, I can uh, decide what theta is suitable for me to fly my plane, uh, to have the line of uh, heading so that I can reach the destination accordingly. So, V plane becomes uh, VW. Sorry. So, sine theta becomes because theta is unknown, alpha is known. Okay, <clears throat> anyway, next point. How much time to take to reach the destination? So time taken to reach the destination will be D upon 
VW cos alpha will also contribute. And VP cos theta. Am I right? So T turns out to how much? D upon? And then cos it can replace by. I hope this is clear. Okay. Yes. All right. So imagine we have a, <clears throat> uh, imagine that we have a, a round trip journey in which a plane has to go from A to B, B to C, C to D and back to A. So this is the path traversed by the, the plane. <clears throat> the wind is, Parallel to the side edge everywhere. So maybe you're trying to, you know, move your drone at home along this square. And it is known that uh, the wind is <coughs> moving with velocity V. Uh, let's call it U. So how much time it will take for the plane to go from A to B to B to C, C to D, D to A, back to A? <coughs> the velocity of plane with to wind is uh, V. So in the still air, like when the air is not moving, just like the still water, we can observe the still air, it can fly with the speed V. Okay. So what is the, what is the, time taken for the round trip journey. So find the time taken by the plane for the round trip journey. Question is clear? Question is clear, yes or no? Yes. Hello. So let me explain a bit. <clears throat> when you go from A to B, it's like a down downstream problem. If you go from B to C, it's like a problem in which you're trying to move per pentagon to the flow of the river. C to D is called the upstream, and D to A is the same question as B to C. So if you know the river when problem, you can solve this in one line. If you don't know, you can deny it. Sir, so this is uh, the line of heading or the line of motion? The path is line of motion always. <laughs> you have to trace this path. This is the actual path traced by the plane. Okay, sir. So as I said, now you go from A to B, you go, then go to B to C. So where I'm saying you, you go from A to B, it means that is your line of motion. Right? Yes. <laughs> the path always represents the line of motion. The line of heading is the, the head, where you head. So as a pilot, when you go from A to B, you will go just like this. Not when you go from B to C, because wind will try to push you right, you will head like this. Here we will just go exactly like this. And again, you will go this way. Do you realize this? What I'm saying? Yes. Sir. This is the line of heading in each case. 
Now try this out. It's very easy. Let's say length of the each path is L. So what the total time of journey for A, B, C, D? You can add the answer very easily. For A, B part, it's a downstream problem. So L by U plus V. Yes, sir. L by under root of uh, V is square minus U square. L by uh, V minus U. L by. So you can think about it how I solved. <laughs> if you can, it's good. So now we are left with the last topic of uh, kinematics, which I will cover in the next lecture as a separate. Thing. And that is the end of kinematics <coughs> for me, not for you. So you have to keep on solving. And uh, as you solve more, I'll keep on giving you some uh, tougher assignment. Once you are finished with these assignments, I'll give you some challenging question. Uh, we will keep on solving for the next six months kinematics. So you will always see that I'm giving you question of kinematics uh, again and again. The time that we took to finish kinematics, uh, the same time we can finish next three chapters. So imagine the importance of kinematics. It takes same time as the other three, the next three chapters will take. So laws of motion, friction, <laughs> and circular motion. Together, it takes same time as kinematics. Okay. So less than that, we are going to finish those three chapters. So that's why I said kinematics is really huge topic. Uh, it's a big thing. Practice each and every derivation which I have given the class. Revise, relearn, redo, till you get the hang of it. Okay. And again, let me tell you, the entire preparation of JE is very simple if you only devote time in the beginning chapters. Okay, so devote time to strengthen your base, make it as strong as possible, as strong as possible, <laughs> other you can crack. If you try to strengthen the other chapters, not the base, you will struggle. So choice is yours. So the next topic is called velocity of approach. So this is a topic less common for the J, but it is basically for the Olympiad kind of assumption. Also, as a part of teaching, uh, we do cover these topics because you can solve some harder problems of Olympiad also. Okay, bye guys. Take care. See you in the next lecture. Thank you so much.